Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brian Kafke, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can connect from Power BI to Databricks clusters really easily using something called the Partner Connect. By the way, please consider supporting me through my Patreon channel, link in the description, where you can get this video and many others ad free among the benefits. Let's jump in. So I'll also note the documentation links are in the video description, so you can go and click on those and follow through with more background and details. We're going to be talking about the new Power BI Partner Connect, the requirements to use it, how to set it up from Power BI Desktop, and then how to modify the BI Service Connection to be more going forward, so you deploy the report and going forward. So Partner Connect, this is a Databricks product. So it's not Azure, it's not Microsoft, it's Databricks. And it works from the Databricks workspace. That's where you actually go to set things up. From there, you can easily create a connection file, which can then be used from Power BI. Now, there are a couple of requirements, though. I think they're pretty straightforward and make sense. The first and most important one is you have to have, if you're using it from Azure, it is supported on AWS as far as the documentation explains. Uh, but if you're using it, you do need to have access to Databricks SQL because it's using the SQL engine to provide this connection. So you can use different tables and views you have in Databricks. And that means you have to have the premium plan. To create new connections to partner solutions, you must also first sign into the workspace as the Databricks admin. And for all other Partner Connect tasks, you must first sign into the workspace um, as an admin or something similar. So let's step through connecting. As you can see, we are now in our Databricks workspace. So you'll have to go to Azure, sign in, start your workspace, and go into it. So you have to log into that. And we are sitting now in our Databricks workspace. From this screen, if you go to the left, it expands, and you can see we have something called Partner Connect. You want to click on Partner Connect. And the idea behind Partner Connect is that it's really sort of the expansion on the idea of Data Lakehouse. Lots of different services and things that Databricks wants to be able to enable you to easily connect to and integrate into your pipelines. So they added this service. You can see there's a lot of things in here. And if you scroll down, not only is Tableau supported, but Microsoft Power BI. And to be honest, this is kind of a nice value add because if this were, say, Microsoft specific, they'd probably lean more towards just supporting their products, at least to some extent, whereas Databricks doesn't really care. So we're going to click on the Microsoft Power BI. And you can see it pops up and asks you for the compute. Now, I found something kind of interesting. Whether or not your clusters are running, it's going to show you the list of your clusters. We want Databricks demo. It'll let you, with clusters not running, download the connection file, as you can see. But you will not be able to open it until the cluster is started. That's the thing I've learned. So we're going to download a file. It's already got a default extension. We're going to just save it. And you can see here you've got some other things. It says to open the connection file, you should have Power BI, and that's the version number you should have. If you don't, you can download and install it. And that means the desktop version. Then you just open the connection file and sign in. And it talks about ways you can sign in, personal access token or username, password. We're good from here. Now we've downloaded the file. We just have to click on it to open it or however you do it on your system. And that's going to automatically open Power BI. And notice it says it's connecting. It knows this is the connection properties. It knows that it's trying to connect to your Databricks cluster. Now, my cluster happens to be running. And if you'll notice, I didn't give it any credentials either, which is interesting because the documentation talks about you'll need to log in with credentials. I believe it didn't ask me for that because I'm already logged in to my Databricks workspace. So it didn't need to ask me. It already assumed that. And since the cluster is already running, I can go right in and stop browsing things. I should let you know, though, if your cluster is not running at this point, it will start your cluster. And you may have to wait a few minutes until the cluster is ready to show you things because th that's what's going on here. And I have a bunch of databases here. So I'm going to pick just one of my databases, which is AW, AdventureWorks, right? I use that for a lot of things. And I'm going to try to create something a little bit useful. I'm going to take uh, Fact Internet Sales. And I'll just bring in Sales Territory to make this really simple. And then I'm just going to say Load. I've been surprised, too, that it's very quick to do this. The Fact Internet Sales is not big data, mind you, but it's still a pretty good-sized table, and it came, comes down really quickly. Now, I want to point out something you may be wondering, which is in the lower right side, you'll see it says Storage Mode, and says click here if you want to change it, and you can change the Storage Mode to be Import. So by default, we can see that it's using Direct Query, 
which is probably why it's so fast <laughs> as I think about it, because uh, it's just going to query as it goes. So that's a nice thing. If you go with using Databricks, is you don't want to have to bring all that big data over and store it and run refreshes. Direct Query is going to pass your queries directly through to the Databricks cluster and execute them. But bear in mind, it may take a while if this is a lot of data and it's got to do a lot of work on the back end like aggregation and things. So there's a trade-off there. If you can get your data sets to a smaller size and just import them, you're probably better off. As you noticed, when we picked the files we wanted, we can see all of these SQL tables we have defined to the cluster, but views are also there. So that means that we can create views that will join together a bunch of tables, get dimension values, etc., and present a single table if that's what we like. And in a case like this, that's probably a good idea in many cases because you don't want to be running a lot of overhead on the back end if you can do it directly through a view. And that's probably a good idea because of using a view in Databricks can simplify a lot of the access. So let's take a look at our model. We can see we've got our model here. Here's our two tables. And one thing you'll notice is that it didn't default to creating any relationships between the tables. We can do that really easily by just taking our sales territory key and dragging it over to the sales territory key here. And then we'll get a confirmation. Is that what you really want to do? And you can see, okay, just confirm sales territory key and sales territory key. Great. And now we have a connection and we can see that it's many sales related to a single territory. So it looks like we're good to go as far as that. So I'm going to create a simple bar chart just to get a feel for this, how this works. And I'm going to go into fact internet sales and I'll click on sales amount as a starting point. And I want to see that by sales territory country. So we've got our little visual here. Nothing fancy. I know. Impressive. But the gist is we were able to easily connect, really didn't have to do anything practically, and we are now connecting to our Databricks cluster, which is really great. Again, you will need to consider, is the cluster always running or will there be times where it's going to shut off? If you're going to shut it off, there's a bunch of other implications. So that's really it for creating the connection and using it from the Power BI desktop. And from this, just kind of step through, we had to log into the Databricks workspace with admin privileges. We clicked on the Partners Connect icon. We then clicked on the Power BI icon. These are in the workspace menu. We downloaded the connection file and then we opened the file. And then if you're prompted, which I think you will be if you're not already logged into the workspace, then you'll have to enter logon credentials or there's other methods obviously you can also connect with. And then just build your reports. I mentioned that by default, you can see here I kind of expanded this because it's hard to read on that screen I was on. But you can see here that below the column selector it has the storage mode and it tells you it's direct query by default and if you click on that you can change it to import mode now the other side of this that I wanted to mention is configuring the Power BI service side because obviously I'm on my side I've entered my credentials but other people are going to be using this report so let's take a look at how that works so we'll start by saving our project so I'm gonna say save and we'll give it a name like uh, Power BI Databricks save then we can say publish and we have to pick where do we want to launch this so I'll launch it to YouTube demo and now I'm logged into my Power BI service you can see I'm at the home screen and let's go down to my I have a workspace here you can see YouTube demo and this is the thing I just created which is my report so I'm going to try to run the report okay so it took a little while but it, it came back and gave us a report so if we go into our data sets, we may want to change how this is set up, and we'll probably have to for the actual deployment. So we can go over here next to the data set, which is in our workspace, do the drop down, and click on settings. And from settings, you have a lot of different things. One of the things I may want to change is how the Databricks credentials are being created. So I can go here if I would like and edit the credentials, and we can make changes. As you can see here, it's starting with OAuth 2. I can do basic or do something called key. And I'm not going to get into that side of things, but you may have some additional work to do to modify the way the credentials are working for your environment. To step through what we needed to do to configure the Power BI service, we logged into the Power BI portal. We clicked on data sets and we clicked on our action menu, select settings, and then we clicked on the data source credentials and then we edit the credentials as we need to. Now, of course, before we did this, we deployed the report. So we deployed it to our uh, service. 
and then we could go in there and modify things. That's the gist of it. And you can see it's pretty straightforward. So that's nice. And I have to say this is much cleaner and easier than other methods, though it wasn't complicated before, I don't think. This does make it a lot easier just clicking and doing a few things rather than some of the steps that were necessary in the past. So wrapping up, we learned about the new Power BI Partner Connect, which is one of many connections available through the Databricks Partner Connect service. We review the requirements to use it, which basically just means that you have to have support for Databricks SQL. And you have to have access to an admin account so that you can do the necessary steps. We walk through creating a Power BI desktop connection and using it. Then we deploy the report. We were able to look at the report and see that it was great. It took a little while to get out there. And then I showed you how you can modify the connection properties of the data source if you would like to. That's it for this time. So again, please subscribe, share, like, consider supporting me on Patreon, link in the description. Until next time, I'm Pulling for you. We're all in this together. Thank you.